Hey, what's up, everybody? I want to welcome you to another episode of Offstage with myself, your host, Benny Mena. And today we have our lovely guest, Luz Passos. Luz, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Chilling. All right, cool. So, uh, like I told you before, we're trying to get to know a little bit about you, what happens in your life offstage. All right, we've done a lot of shows lately together. Yes. All right, so uh, let me ask you, um, first of all, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, five years right now. Five years? Five. Mm-hmm. All right, and you grew up, where are you from? I'm from Peru. Peru, okay. And mm-hmm. you started doing comedy in Peru once you got to the States? No, in Peru I was doing uh, theater. Actually, I lived in Europe for a while. Oh, really? And I did theater there. What kind of, what part of Europe? Uh, Italy. Oh, nice. Yes, I lived there nice. for six years. Okay. The closest then I came to Italy is Papa John's Pizza. Papa but John's Pizza, yeah. <laughs> that's the closest I come to Italy. No, no, it's not like Italy. All right, cool. So, uh, so you did theater acting? I did theater acting and then I... Well, I went to college there. Oh, okay. So then I moved back to Peru. I was doing a sketch comedy. Okay. Then I moved here, and I started doing sketch comedy here, but um, I didn't ever really like it. I never really liked the the whole group thing. And I wanted to do stand-up, but I didn't think I, I would be able, you know, because of my English. It was even, it was worse than now, you know, right now it's thick. It's, yeah, it's I remember worse. when I met you, I didn't understand you. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> But um, then I, it took me a couple of years to to decide to actually to, do, it, to do it, to do it, to start doing it. And and how was your writing process of your jokes? What how did you come about writing your jokes? Did somebody help you out? Did you already have a format or? No, I just I took I taking a lot of writing classes. So mm-hmm. even right now I'm still taking I take a script classes. I, so I know I know how to to write jokes. I know I know the format and everything. So that's how I start doing it. But then, but now I'm just I already know how to do it. So I just I just do it. You know? Okay. Because you know when I first saw you, uh, first time I ever saw you perform, it was at uh, the Man's Chinese Theater. There was a I forget what, show? what it was. I forget what it was called. I think it was Richard Villa show. Oh. One of his shows, uh, the the refried shows. The refried, yes. But uh, I forget I, the name of the what they call the theater. I remember it was I guess a spa at uh, Inside Jokes. Inside Jokes, that's what they called it. It was inside the Man Chinese Theater. Yeah. They decided to start like a comedy yes. club and they called it Inside Jokes. And that's our friend cool. of ours, Richard Villa, he had his own show and he had you on. That's the first time I saw you. Now, first time I saw you, I was kind of tripping out because you were. Uh, that was already like almost four or five years ago, so you probably were just starting out. Yes. And you were doing almost nothing but crowd work. Really? And then, yeah, and I, I saw you, and you did, used to do a lot of crowd work, and now, uh, like I told you before, you know, uh, you know, you were always funny, but now I, I think you're hilarious, you know, and, and you do material. You know, you still kind of talk to the audience sometimes, but you have like straight up material, and I think it's hilarious. You so, know what so, happens is I start... Where I, I started doing comedy and then I started hosting for a friend Michael his shows at the comedy store. Okay. And when I started hosting at the comedy store, everybody started giving shit Michael why I was hosting. And so I never did crowd work. I was so scared. So one day he's just you just gotta do crowd work today because everybody's giving me shit. So it went up, I started doing crowd work and I started liking it. And then I just started doing crowd work a lot because I was so scared about every Monday at the comedy store, I had to do crowd work. Oh, so I think okay. you got me in the period where I was working really hard on getting my crowd work going. Yeah, yeah, because I saw you. <laughs> and cause, to be honest, I was like, why is she doing crowd work? You know, you're a young comic, you got like like seven minutes on stage. Why yeah. would you do crowd work? But okay, that's cool. Yeah, but yeah. hey, your material is really funny now. I really, yeah, I really oh, like your jokes. I use her a lot, a lot of shows that I, I, I book. You know, actually, you know what I was thinking? I was going to say the first time you saw me, I thought it was at the show that you gave me a guest spot. It was awful. I remember, was it was at the Laugh Factory. It was five minutes at the beginning of the show. I think it was one of the worst sets I ever had. You know what? That's we, the we second one. We are having one. <laughs> because them. it was so bad. I felt so bad. It was like... I don't know if you remember. I remember. And I started getting laugh like towards the end of my five minutes. It was so cold. I was feeling so bad. I was like, oh my God, this is the worst. Like, I was so embarrassed. No, I remember that. No, no, no. But the first time I saw you, that was actually only about two and a half, three years ago. Yeah, but it was like yeah. terrible. I yeah. Just, but I had seen you like a year and a half before that at Inside Jokes. Inside Jokes, okay. Yeah. Now everybody's going to think I suck, but I had that, that bad. I think it was, was a cold opening at that 
laugh factor you remember uh -huh. I went up first yeah 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 well that's you know the it guest was pass, like yeah. it was like oh god okay <laughs> no and I remember then that. I did your show back in the laugh factory how long ago like like twice about, twice this year yeah um, the last one was like a month and a half ago yes or it two was months great. ago yeah so yeah, yeah you did great you did great and just, I just had you you know I've had you other shows that I do the one in, yeah. in Whittier and then the one in San Pedro and they like you they yes. like you you know it's funny so well, let me ask you this. Uh, um, <laughs> so, so, so uh, you come from Peru, yes, and and uh, you stay here. So, when I first met you, it's not even flaquita. Not that you know you're thick right now. Oh but, shit! But, but, but okay, I, this is, this is the worst. I wanna, no, the reason I'm bringing that up is we just did a show in San Pedro, so and they had I was belly dancers. Senior? Yeah, and, and so I'm just saying, are, are you Americanized now? Are you like American sized portions, or are you are you still eating like I you did don't in Peru? No, I. I go through periods and I get uh, skinny. No, because I'm fat get, right now. I gain a I lot get of weight. I get and I get, this, I get, like, I go through periods. I don't think, you know, I was a skinnier in my early 20s. Then I got a little fatter. Then I go skinny again. And now I'm like, a weird period. Like, I'm 30 years old, okay, now. So You're still young. It's still just, young. No, but it's still like my body change, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, how do you say, like, digest in the same way. Way. Yeah, no, no. But the reason I ask is because some people get, very, <laughs> you know, they get Americanized. Se ponen bien americanos, comen como los americanos. You know, everybody eats big portions here. So, Man, I was so I didn't even remember. Like I look. No, the reason I bring it up because we just did a show. <laughs> we just did a show a couple of weeks ago for my birthday. I had a birthday show in San Peter, yeah. right? Oh, and this place, so they had uh, belly dancers, right? So uh, this is before she hit the stage. So, so, you know, I think it was right before the show. No, it was, the show was going on. Anyways, she started dancing like the belly dancer, right? And it was me and <laughs> DJ Cooch were watching her. And she was doing a good job of it. She actually, you know, she was moving in rhythm and stuff. So I was like, hey, if you belly dance, you got to show the belly. And so she showed her belly. And, you know, so Cooch was like, ooh. And first thing I thought, I was like, oh, she's a beer drinker. She drinks beer. <laughs> <laughs> because I Cause, got a belly. Because I was expecting you to have like a flat, you know, stomach. But I was like, oh, okay, she looks like me. You know, so, like guys, okay, number one, okay, number one, belly dancers need to have belly. No, it's, uh, yeah, you know, hey. <laughs> but hey, you know. I used to do belly dance when I was so younger. Oh, really? Yeah, for oh, a little the, bit. Uh, con razón, no wonder you had it. Yeah, Because you were doing very well, so me and Coach was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, guys, it is what it is, you know. It arrives <laughs> one time, I'm 30, I'm like, whatever, this is, this is what it is. I won't try to be a skinner. I used to do beauty pageants. Oh, really? And it was a nightmare because I naturally, I'm not super skinny, you know, I like to eat. So I will got to get on diets and they will weigh you every week. And it was so stressful. It was even more stressful than going to college. Like really? studying for exams was not as stressful as having to be skinny. So it's just, I, I just don't, it's like, you know, if it's not you who is supposed to be super skinny, yeah. it's just not you, you know? Like, it's no, just no, gotta, hey, you know what? And then your metabolism changes. You I was skinny in, all throughout my 20s. Oh, yeah, and I saw your time. pictures, man. Yeah, yeah, now then, it's no, <laughs> yeah, now I'm, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, what, you know, what now I'm, hey, I just had, a, I just had my 44th, so, uh, you it know. It seems that you yeah. were the one that had the kids. <laughs> ah, she's got jokes, she's got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, you know, sometimes I feel like I had a kid. Sometimes I feel like I had a kid. Right, so let me ask you this. Um, as a young lady, young, you know, young comic, I'm trying to be out professional. As a young comic, especially female, you know, like, because the guys, you know, you know, guys when we were younger and stuff like that, comics, you know, we go out on the road, we, you know, we, we meet girls, whatever. Do you meet guys when you're on the road? Or do you hook up with other comics when you're on the road or in LA? Never at comics. In Never. I wouldn't then hook up with a comic ever. Like, it's just... The, bro the worst thing you can do. Have you ever done it before ever. when you first started? Ever. When I first started, I made a mistake twice. <laughs> and I wouldn't do it ever again. You dated a comic or you just hooked up? Was was like we, we just hooked up and the other one I dated and it was both a mistake. Okay, was it a mistake because it was too competitive or a mistake because... Number one, were, once was a really were, famous comic. So really? the famous one is just a dick because famous people are dicks, you know, like it was just, it was just a dick. The whole he so lacked it. I was like, why did I even, why did I even hook up with this guy? I think it was because, you know, <laughs> I'm curious. <though. laughs> I just broke up with my ex 
so I was kind of in those interested. weird periods, you know, when oh. women just break up, they are like, like, all like fragile and bullshit, you uh -huh. know, so it was like, oh, so he was cute, I always liked him, so it's like, oh my god, this is the thing, when you just start uh, doing comedy, you don't comedy? realize how annoying, how bad, narcissistic, self-absorbed, egocentric are real comedians, so the person that you like on stage is oh, gonna, totally never gonna be... Yeah. At the asshole that you're gonna meet in person. Oh yeah. No, it was like a married, like it was like a white guy. Oh okay, okay. And then the other one was just a. Was a guy like a like a guy that would do comedy with me, but it's just the thing about guys is they wanna brag, so they he uh... told people I'm like, don't tell people because this is over. I just right. don't want anyone to know my personal life, you know. So then I realized no, it's just a mistake. Okay. Well, what about guys from the audience? Like, I meet guys and they ask me out. Usually they send me, I have my joke, the thing about always splitting guys, but they yeah. have to split a check. So that, they usually, they use this line always. They are like, oh, you want to go on a date? No worries, I want to split. And you know, jokes like that work. When I was younger, I used to do a joke how girls never buy guys beer. You know, I used to talk about single guys, you know, always got the beer, buy the beer, or buy girls drinking. Girls never buy us drink, so. I used to have a lot of girls, you know, after shows, like, hey, I'll buy you a drink. That's how I met my girl. She came up to me, she said, hey, where's your beer? I'm uh, like, I just finished yeah. it. She goes, I thought you were an alcoholic. I'm like, oh, I'll get another one. She said, I'll buy you one. I'm like, I'll go for it. And that's how oh, we met. Nice. Yeah, so jokes like that, yeah. That. Jokes like that work, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I never go out with most of them because I don't like them. I'm like, oh. And the whole time I've done comedy, I, I like, like, maybe two guys. I Ooh. went out and... No. Okay. So right now, I mean, do you, do you meet people outside of comedy? Like when you're at the grocery store? Uh, I don't know if you go to church or... No, church. Uh, <laughs> I don't meet. I try to not meet men. They're okay. just so disappointing. <laughs> so, are, you, are, you, are you switching sides? Is that what it is? You're switching sides? Uh, no, it's just, I just much better without them. Yeah. Like. It's just such a oh. difference being single than being with a guy that's just gonna know you the fucker. Like, this is the thing. Before, I was struggling. Like, right now, I'm making most of my money over the comedy. Mm -hmm. So I'm cool, you know? It's just, why wouldn't it complicate my life with a right. stupid guy that is just gonna uh, annoy, annoy me, be jealous, or like go around with other girls? So, like, if it's, he's like a little handsome, I'm gonna be thinking, I'm gonna be, wrong, gonna be thinking, who's his fucking? Or because, you know, there is always going to be a problem. So it's just, it's better like this. I'm alone. I do whatever I want. So you're saying is you're jealous. I'm <laughs> jealous and guys are jealous too. Yeah, no, well, certain thing. guys are. I'm yeah. not jealous, but I don't trust men. I trust very little men. I think in Los Angeles, a man that is a little good looking, has a good job. You have, you have at least one thing going on for you as a man. You can get girls so easy. So I don't trust men here. So you prefer like out of shape, older, ugly guys? Oh, of course. That's my first show. George, always. George, George, you have a oh. shot, baby. You have a shot. But they have to have a lot of money. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> That's my thing. I George. sacrifice everything, but they have to be really wealthy. Because no, they no. like to go eat to really nice places, you know? So. I want to keep that lifestyle for myself. Okay, see, so I don't know what they call it in Peru, but in America, <laughs> that's called the gold digger. Gold digger, right? yeah, it could be. You know, you know it, it is. <laughs> that's what it is. But, you know, most guys are uh, you know, rich and they want younger girls. They want girls with like, flat stomachs. So, anyways. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> so you know what? When they're in their 50s, they like what it is. They, they, you know? they, what it is. they, they don't care. They, I don't go with guys in their 40s. No, that's a mistake. you got to go with an older guy, 50s. So 20 year difference? Yes, always. Wow, have you ever dated a 50 year old? Always. No way, really? Most of my, since I was 20, most of my boyfriends have been 50, 53, 47, 48. Oh man, that is gross. No, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. You no. know what? No, you're you're going to be 50, was, when I was you're going to be like, that's a good thing. No, 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 like no, I'm missing you. Now, when I was younger, I wasn't told the women. But you know, uh, now I'm 44, so one older woman, I gotta be like, hey mom, you got any single friends? You know? Oh, yeah. But yeah, but, <laughs> but then, you know, my girl will kill me. So, yeah, you, you know. Have a girlfriend. That's yeah, cool. I got a fiance, there's a difference. Fiance, so, yeah. Yeah, you know, just, I don't have the ring yet because you're not married yet, but you know, it's That's happening good, at the end though. of this year. So, all right, so, um, so let, let me ask you this because I know that you're on the road a lot, uh -huh. right? And you've been doing comedy five years. It took me 
Well, it took me like three years to start hitting the road, but not, not far, like Bakersfield, Fresno, you know, wherever. But you go out of state. Yes. So uh, uh, how did you get up, you know, for only a five-year comic, you're on the road a lot. How did that happen Well, for you? I meet a lot of, I, I perform in the Hollywood side a lot mm -hmm. and also in the Latin side. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of connections from different parts, and then I meet, you know, I've I done a lot of, like, a couple of TV taping things, so, like, the HBO Latino thing that didn't air, but still I met the people there. They didn't so air in that yours? context, no, because they just aired the Ida Rodriguez one and the one. But that one, that one was done afterwards, right? Yes, and there are a lot of, like, Jesus Sepulveda, all that, all the part he hasn't aired yet. We don't know what's going to happen. They said we want to put in HBO Go. I don't know. Okay. But... The thing about that is like I met people, you meet people through those and then they bring you on the road. Okay, so you when you're in the road, do you open your feature? When I do festivals, when I did festivals, I did a lot of festivals like two years ago and I met booking companies booking, yeah. and they start booking me for the road. Okay, so I mean when you're on the road, do you open, do you feature, do you? I feature and lately I've been headlining. Which really? is like it's weird for me because I don't think I should be headlining, but some people think I could be headlining some stuff. I don't think I'm like the headliner. How much time you but got? But I can, I can, I do forty when I headline. Wow, really? I didn't, you know, not, not talking trash. I didn't know you had forty. Yeah, you know, I have in 40. LA, you know, it's it's a showcase. No, it's a showcase town. Most most spots are like 15, 20 minutes, maybe twenty five. Yes, you know, that's why I like um, to go on the road. So they they make me do thirty. Oh yeah, my first time going. Uh, headlining, um, I went to Washington State, and it was the first time I did over an hour, you know, and I remember I was with a guy named Rodrigo Torres, he's a good friend of mine, uh, he tours around with Felipe Esparza now, oh, and, and I, yeah, so I was like, hey man, how, how'd I do? He goes, oh, that was good, good, he goes, he goes, it wasn't no, uh, uh, bring the pain, you know, you know, bring the pain by Chris Rock, he goes, but it was good, <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know? So, you know, but, but you know, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. It was my first time, because um, I thought I was going to do only like 45 minutes. You know, I was, I was stressing about doing my first 45 on the road. Oh, shit. And I wanted to do an hour know. six. God, you know, I, don't, so. I don't think I can do that. Ever. Yeah, so. Like, no, you 40, will. Hey. 40, 40, no, but right now, like 40, yeah. I just, like, I'm barely under, but it's hard. And, and, and what's your um, uh, inspiration for, for your jokes or, or, you know, who do you aspire to be as a comic? Um, well, I like the the big comics. I like Louis C.K. I like Bill Burr. But even like even after what happened, you like Louis C.K.? <laughs> oh, of course, I yeah. don't care. That's so oh. stupid. No, yeah, well, me too. I, you know, I'm, so I'm, I'm still a big fan of his. Bill Burr is amazing. Bill Burr is amazing. DJ Hoogly, I like... Um, DL. DL, sorry. Yeah, not DJ. I like, um, you know, Gat Elman, the, the French... The French comic, God, I, the man. I he's think like I, a, yeah. he's a French actor and a comedian. I really mm. like him. You should watch him on Netflix. He has really good stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you watch from, comics from all over? Yes. Okay, what about female comics? Anybody you like? Sarah Silverman, because she's really smart. Um, it's hard to like female comics, to be really? honest. Really? <coughs> yes. like, you, know, you don't see like a female comic, like I want to be like her? I, I like Monique Marvez. I like oh. Ida Rodriguez. They okay. are really good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had a good friend of mine. So was Monique. I remember when I first started, I met Monique, and I didn't realize how she's, you know, much in the game she was. Oh, yeah. She's oh, yeah. yeah. She, you know, she's awesome. She's yeah, awesome. She's you know, I, I, uh, I like her a lot. She's really cool. She's always been really nice. And uh, when I first started, I used to book her a lot, too. And now, <laughs> now she's another level. Yes. You know, I really so, like her. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's, she's great. Yeah, those are the two that I really like right now that I can see around. All right. Cool. and you live in Hollywood right now? Yes. So what's your everyday routine like? You know, do you actually spend time writing jokes or do you just ha go throughout your day and you like think of something funny? Oh, I spend time writing jokes and I go to open mics so in between mics I write because mm -hmm. it's like one hour, an hour and a half until they call your name so I'm like writing in between mics. Then even if you won't believe this, I go to the gym. Really? You just go watch? Yeah, I just go watch everybody working out. No, I go, I go, I work out. And what else I do? I go to the movies. Um, what kind of movies do you like? I watch a lot of... Okay, you gotta understand that I'm like... More like an European person in my brain. Like, I, I live okay. in Europe a long time. So I watch a lot of independent European movies. Oh, okay, no, that's cool. I, I'm a movie freak. I watch anything. Mm -hmm. I, like, I love movies. I love going to movies. I go... My girl trips out with me. She thinks I'm weird because I go by myself. Oh, I go by myself I, all I the time. I go myself during the day, 
you know, because if, if I really want to see a movie like a big blockbuster, I'll wait a week or two. So that way I go during yeah. the day and I don't, because I don't like all that. I want to pay attention. I don't want all the yapping and, you know, or people yes. laughing or like, ooh, whatever. So I like watching by myself and she thinks that's weird. You no, know, no, I love it. And that's I the best way to watch own. a movie, I think. Yeah. I, lo I go on my own a lot. And there are a lot of independent movie theaters in Hollywood areas. So okay. I go. But my house, there is one uh, two blocks away. Do you want to go back into acting? No. Just focus on comedy only? I've been focusing on comedy for the last three years. I haven't gone to auditions or anything. But I'm you, pretty happy. But I you, just don't oh, okay. So, yeah, I was going to say, you don't want to... Mm -mm. Uh, no. yeah, what's up? High five. Focus <laughs> on comedy. Although, you know, I've been doing it now. I'm going on this. This month will be my 19th year, so I'm going to try to get back into acting. You're going to back. Yeah, because I, I, I did acting about 10 years ago. You know, I did a commercial, and I did, like, you know, extra roles and stuff like that, and I'm trying to get back into it, but... I need acting lessons. <laughs> need acting yeah. lessons. Yeah, I need acting lessons. Yeah, because it's been a while. while just, I, I wouldn't like to go to any more like, auditions for commercials. It's such a waste of time. Sometimes I feel like they are, but I'm getting more and more comfortable every time I go, so it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, you like it? Okay, that's good. I, I don't personally. Yeah, no, no, if you don't like it, you don't like it. You know, because I focus on comedy for so long. It's only comedy. Now I want to, you know, just, just, just open up different avenues, you know. Yeah, so, that's good. That's yeah, good. You, know. you can book. But, actually, yeah. that's you booking a lot of commercials. And, and, and you're young, so you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time, you know. Me, you know, I got a family now, so I want to, I'm trying to, you know. Uh, the thing is, like, I don't want to go through the audition process. What I do is, like, sometimes someone that seems to do comedy has something and say, oh, come to the callback directly. So oh, I just okay. go there. I don't want to go through the whole. Yeah, the whole process. The catch show, the agent, the going there, no. Okay, no, cool. Alright, cool. All right, cool. We're gonna take a little break right now. We're gonna pay some bills and we'll be back with loose puzzles. Alright, see you in a minute. I'm gonna belly dance. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm gonna make you belly dance. I'm gonna make you belly dance. Bienvenidos a su restaurante peruano favorito, aquí en el Pollo Inc. en la ciudad de Cardina. Si te apetece deleitarte con una auténtica comida peruana, tienes que visitar el Pollo Inca de Gardina, con sus especialidades de todos los días como son tallarín verde con bistec, papa a la huancaína, pollo a la brasa, lomo saltado, ceviche de pescado y muchos platillos más. Estamos abiertos 7 días a la semana. Con un ambiente totalmente familiar, serás atendido por un personal ampliamente profesional. Recuerda, no dejes de visitar el Pollo Inca de la ciudad de Gardina y prueba el mejor sabor de comida peruana de la región. Recuerden que aquí los estaremos esperando con un ambiente familiar. ¡Los esperamos! Everybody, we're back on off stage uh, with my guest today, uh, Luz Patos. All right, we're getting to know a little bit more about the, the sexy Peruvian. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned earlier that one of you thought the first time I saw you was when I gave you a guest spot at the Laugh Factory show. Yes, but actually, you saw me. I saw you before, but no, what I was going to get to is you said that it was one of your worst sets. So, what was one of your worst sets you ever did? That one at the Laugh Factory, the, those five guest spot minutes that were a nightmare. Then I had a casino in uh, near to Sacramento. Uh -huh. uh, I don't remember what's the name, but it was with Rick uh -huh. God, that was the worst show ever. I had to do... Well, yours, the whole show or just your set? The whole show. Really? It was like, the casinos usually have a room separate for the thing, but it was, this was the bar. And it was kind of open, so you could see all the slot machines yeah. and people were playing. That happens a lot. And they right? had the stage here. It was huge, and there was a bar, and the people were at the bar, and mm -hmm. just few people sitting on tables there. And they didn't want to listen material. You had to do crowd work. It had to do 30 minutes. It was, just, it was such a nightmare. You did 30 minutes? Yes. Was that your and, first time and, doing and 30? No. Or? no, no, no. But this was the first time 
doing it such a bad situation. And then uh, Rick had to do an hour. Ah. So it was so painful. It was really bad. Uh, it was a really bad. Like I never had a gig that was so awful. So how does that make you feel when you have like a bad set? Do you do you? Because uh, you know we're our worst critics. So do you, you know? Do you get mad at yourself? Like, oh yeah, I always get mad at myself. So right. Most people get mad at the audience, which is really stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they say never blame the audience. I, I've I've been doing this a while, so there are some times where it is the audience, but but you never blame them. You know, yeah, you always... it, it definitely was the audience, but it was up to us to make it happen. Yeah. You know, that's what I think. Like if you blame all the time the audience, it's just no, no, no. You don't blame the audience, but there's 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 shows where I've done where they just don't want to listen, and then and then and then. And then it's one thing when they heckle your material, but they're just yelling stuff out. You know, I did a it's show, impressive. I did a show, and in the back, some people were about to fight. You know, they fight with each other. Not about the comedy, just personal grudge. You know, it was, it was a, a small town in, in, uh, in uh, down by San Diego, and um, what you call it. So people from the front turned around, like, ooh, you know. And, oh, I don't and sh- well, I was on stage, and he just killed my set. You know, because that's that, like was that tension. Oh, yeah. God, yeah, I remember that show too. That was bad too. Like, no, it wasn't bad actually. Like, it was good until the guys start fighting. But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, those cases I think are special, right? But it's, if it's like a setting that they don't want to listen, but you have to make them listen to you. Have you ever done a show, because you know how you said you try to crowd work, you do crowd work, where you pissed off somebody so much that they come after you after the show, or they try to attack you? Oh, a yeah. Guy or a girl? A guy's. Like really? guys, yeah, I had three times the guy would come like uh, like him, he stand up and the other guys get like up too and they go like, so make sure nothing is going to happen. But at that point, if there was once, I, I used to have a show in the, it was a bar show with a friend, Jermaine, uh, in Hermosa Beach. Okay. It was a late night, but it was like this foreign guy that was talking to a girl, he was bald. And he was trying to hook up with a girl or something, make it happen. And I started like talking to him and I started making fun of him, but it was like just to make get his attention. He got so pissed and self conscious. He was from Poland and he started like being yelling at me and he came up to me and people were like scared and he was tall. But I mean, when he was talk, I, talking to me, I had to reply to him. I yeah. didn't want to ignore him, you know? Right, right. And that happened another bar show in Bakersfield. This older guy, like Mexican, so for some reason <laughs> talked like he was from Texas, but he was Mexican, Mexican, and he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. He couldn't even understand. He came to me. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, like, I'm for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop talking shit because it was it was a bar. It was like the bar was like a bar in the suburbs of Lima, Peru. Like, okay. When we got there, the electricity was gone. They were putting him back. Like all Baker the people, school, baby. all the all the guys sitting at the bar were like illegal immigrants. I'm guessing, like all in construction. <laughs> like some people didn't speak English. Um, that the bar they had just like cheap. They had cut. It was like those bars that you find on the in Mexico on the, the roads. Border, yeah, yes, the road. on the road corners like that yeah. in Bakersfield. Okay. Yeah. It was like a crazy place. So I was like talking like, oh, I feel like this is my country. <laughs> like I was talking shit. Oh, that's funny. And the guy was like, oh, hey, don't talk shit about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he came to me. But then he didn't do anything. So yeah, because like, you're a girl. And then I mean... he went to the restroom. It's like, yeah, I'm a girl. So it's just, how are you going to be like a dick? Because I've had, I had a guy throw a glass at me one time. I was making fun of really? one girl. <laughs> yeah. I was making fun of one. I was, I it, it was it. a small crowd. And, uh, and it was at this bar. It was called the Wild Coyote. It, it was it used to be really rough, but but at this point they already know me. You know, I've, I've been doing it for a while, whatever. And I was hosting the show, and uh, um, so there was this girl sitting by herself, and she was into the show. But then after the second comic, she started like, you know, because I would tell everybody, listen, you know, if you want to talk trash, talk trash to me, not to the comics. You heard me say that before, talk to me, you know, whatever. So so she started talking trash, and we were going back and forth, and I started, you know, like going in on her, and you know, the small crowd that was there was laughing. And all of a sudden, some guy at the bar just throws like a big mug at me, you know. And I didn't even, I, I didn't even see him throw it. I mean, if it would have hit me, I would have been knocked the hell out or in the hospital because it oh shattered against God. the wall and a little, you know, glasses went all over and it was like one of those big mugs. And I didn't know. It turned out they were together, but they weren't even sitting together during the show. And then so you know, it, it caused the big thing. And I got mad at the management and security because 
everybody was like, that guy did it. And then when they asked him, like, yeah, you know, did you throw that? I'm like, just kick him out. They, you know, yeah. he did it, whatever, you know. And then he tried to, like, pick a fight, whatever, and, and you know, they stopped him, whatever. But that was, like, the worst uh, uh, situation I've ever been in. One time I did a show uh, uh, before that, and this little guy, I, I was making a joke. It was just a joke about one of my friends, about uh, a short friend I had. And this little guy sitting at a table with, like, ten people just gets up. And I mean little, like, he must have been, like, barely, like, five foot, right? And he starts walking towards the stage. And he's talking like trash to me as like he's walking up. And I was like, is, is this for real? You know, I was like looking around. And I'm like, is anybody seeing this? You know, and then, then the stage was about this high, right? You know, like from the ground, like the size of the, size of the table. And he's standing there and I'm all like, do you want me to help you up? You want me to bring you like a, some steps and stuff? And he's all like, oh, I'll go up there and kick your ass or whatever. And he got up. So when he was standing, he came to like middle of my chest, right? And I was like, bro, bro, chill out. Nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to hit you, whatever. He's like, why not? I go, because I don't want to get arrested for child abuse, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was just getting more and more mad. And I look at the table he, you know, he was at. I'm like, yo, is this your friend? You guys going to get him? Like, nah, he does it all the time. Screw him. Fuck him. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, and wow. security came. And I shit you not, security, you know, big buff guy, came, picked him up, and carried him like a little kid. Oh, we were dying. That's Everybody funny, was though. laughing. And for no reason, though. I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't point him out. I didn't do any jokes about him. I just did a joke about one of my friends, like one of my personal friends, an old joke I used to do, and this guy snapped. People are so sensitive sometimes. But, you know, I know comics have been choked. We talked about that. Yeah. Been knocked out. <laughs> I've, I've had comics. I, have, I, I know a comic that got sent to the hospital. You know, he yeah. got he got beat up after a show. They hit him with a shopping cart. You know, and so, you know, but oh and God, you yeah. being a woman, I'm pretty sure it's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, but, it's never But you never had a bad. girl come after you? Oh, girls sometimes are drunk. Listen, that that would happen at the beginning, because now I think I'm very likable to women. Okay. Women usually like me a lot, but at the beginning I would do shows where the girls were drunk and they sometimes would yell like, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't even understand what they were saying. Well, because you're a good-looking girl and they're jealous because their guys are looking at you. When I was younger, Jeff Garcia used to tell me, make fun of yourself because you know you're a young guy and you know. So sure enough, when I would go to like the bar shows. And as soon as I wake up and girls would be like, ooh, you know, guys are your like, puto, you know, and I'm like, fuck you, you know, whatever, you know, and and, uh, and it was that. So when I first started doing comedy, I would make a lot of uh, jokes about myself. I'd make fun of myself, you know, mm -hmm. just to get the guys to like me, you know. And now, you know, you know, I, you see my, I, I talk a lot of trash to everybody, you know, and I'm likable. I, I don't come off as a jerk, so, you know, I don't have to do that. I still make fun of myself, but not for that reason. You know, yes. I just, I just my, my everyday life and stuff like that, but so it's a little bit different. It's so different. let me ask you this: since you since you're traveling a lot now, and even right now you have a heavy accent and stuff like that, does your accent ever interfere with your jokes when you're like somewhere like you know in the Midwest or anything like that? No, in the Midwest, sometimes I had like I did a show in Des Moines, Iowa. Mm -hmm. It was kind of harder because too many white people. They and spoke English and shit. Yeah, they spoke really <laughs> English, deep English, white white English, and then. There was these guys that were kind of racist and yelling and stuff from the corner. Are you? And, and yeah, and the club got upset. Yeah, there's like three guys. But they were the only ones, right? And then, no, it actually one guy in a table of three. And people wanted to kick him out. And I, it wasn't just to me, it was to the headliner too. Who's the headliner? Oh, my friend Michael Hugh. Michael Hugh? Uh-huh. He was okay. headlining. I was uh, well, featuring speaks, and it was a white guy. But Michael speaks But he's No, but he's dark. So okay. they would have been like racist. Mm, okay. Racist people, like you yeah, know, yeah. you meet them. But. It happens. But I had a lot of shows in the Midwest that people were really cool. So it's because I talk shit about white people sometimes, so they kind of get cool, be a little sensitive. Yeah. Side about it. That show I told you the very first time I did like an hour and six minutes. Same thing. I got heckled by some guy, and he was being very racist. You know, and because I was in, it was in Walla Walla, Washington. Oh, okay. So yeah. Walla Walla, Washington is famous for three small colleges and one big ass prison, you know, penitentiary. So people that were there, you know, usually the white people that were there live there. And then if you see black and, and Latinos that are there, it's because they're there for the weekend visiting the inmates, you know. Oh. So so this one guy just kept on going off on me, like you know, like who you here to visit, you know, go back to Mexico, this and that. So you know me, I'm a shit talker, so I went in on him, and you know it, it went up being good, but he wound up being kicked out. The manager of the place was also the bouncer. This guy was buff. So he came and kicked the guy out, and everybody was clapping and stuff like that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I, you know, when I'm on the road, um, 
you know, I, uh, I, you know, I try not to like piss anybody off because you never know. You know, you're not a stage in small, especially small towns like in Texas and stuff like that. But uh, uh, one time, not in Bakersfield, but by by Visalia, I did a show, and after the show, some dudes wanted to fight me just because it was some girls started, you know, start talking to me like they they buy my back then I sell a CD, so they buy my CD and they're like, oh, you're cute, and oh, thank you. And these dudes, I don't know if they're trying to hook up with them or just wanted to fight me because of that. So I was like, I gotta go. So yeah, so you know, I was uh, the headliner at the time. I, um, I forgot who it was, but El Latino, but you know, it's a good friend of mine. But he told me, he goes, hey, I'm gonna go right after the show. I'm gonna go back home. And I'm like, now nah, I'm gonna stay here because you know, I had a couple of drinks and uh, they, five minutes away was a, a motel they put us in, you know. So I was like, well, I'm gonna stay. And then, so I stayed at the club afterwards. It was packed, turned into like a dance thing. And when they wanted to fight me, I'm like, I, I gotta go. So I, you know, I, I jumped in the cab. And you know, security was really cool with me. They stopped the guys because they came out after me. And I, you know, and you know, I was a hothead too. I told them, okay, well, you know, I'm down one on one. They now nah, three on one. I'm like, nah, I gotta go. So you know, they, they stopped them, whatever. But so yeah, I'm for pretty guys sure. Different, yeah, yeah, for guys is different. You know. But yeah, yeah I, I'm sure. Like I'm like a cute girl. I mean, I'm not saying any any profanities or insulting like people. So there is not like much to get upset at. So I will have like some. Racist people, but never it's never like crazy. Yeah. What do your parents think about you doing comedy? Well, my mom, I have just my mom. I don't okay. have a dad. Um, she's cool with it. I mean, when she comes in America, last time she came, she thinks I only talking about her because my mom is all <laughs> self-centered. She's like, so you talk about me the whole time? Like, no, just a little bit. And she's like, why do you talk about me so much? I'm a mom. I'm not talking about you. That's funny. It's like, um, and then. She doesn't understand English, so she gets bored after a little bit. She's like, I don't want to go anymore. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. That's my friends. I was like, then I was, I was once I, when she was here, I took her to the Hollywood Improv. I'm like, mom, there are a lot of famous comics getting up tonight. She's like, oh, whatever, I don't care. I just, but you like famous people. You can see famous people here. She's like, no, I don't understand anything. This is boring. I'm like, oh, God. So just, she just, you know, it's just. She just doesn't get it, really. Okay, but if you were doing, do you ever done Spanish comedy? No. You don't. You, you know. I, but I'm trying to work on my set in Spanish. Mm -hmm. But I'm just more focused on the whining in English, to be honest. But I figured be okay. When you think, you think in English or in Spanish? I think in English, and I also like American humor, which is really different than making jokes for Hispanic people. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Like, like, um, or Latin, Latin, like. Okay, in Peru, do they have stand up or do they just have a comedy? Like, okay, like in Mexico, they, have they were called chistologos. No, no, now they have stand up. And stand up's only about seven, eight years old. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, because, you know, the like stand up oh. they call them, you know. But before that, they were called chistologos, and it was basically, uh, they would tell jokes, but they were kind of like, almost like internet jokes, you know, in like, like storylines. Okay, so. It's and, like, there were guys that stay on the street. In the plaza, mm -hmm. is, and they then the, and they people will go see them on the microphone. They will do Taylor stupid shit. Okay. And ambulantes because it will be in the street. Any of them famous? Before. They got a TV show about comics ambulantes. It became a sketch show. Now the stand up is very new in Peru, even newer than in Mexico. Oh wow! Okay. So what I think the guys that start doing stand up. What are, they really are monologue actors, you know? Mm -hmm. They play mo it's more like mm -hmm. a monologue, monologue because yeah. you can really be in a stand-up comedian in a city that you can perform more than twice a week. That's what I think. Oh, really? Yeah, because there are not that many shows, you know? Mm, okay. So, yeah, there's no this thing like here, like there is no comedy club in Lima, for you example. Know, I, I, I don't know about Peru. Is it, is it a big city or...? Lima is a big city, Lima? but there is no like a club, a comedy club. There is a just really? club that one night does a stand-up. So it's just oh, it's a club that has a comedy night. Yeah, so my mom doesn't, they don't really get it. Mm. You know, they don't get it. She's cool with it. What about when you're doing theater? Was she like, did she like that? She liked it. She's always very critic. You know, she's always like, oh, it should have been better. Like, I didn't like this. I didn't like, always. See, I've been doing I will this. never win with my mother. She will always find something she doesn't like. Parents always win. I, I've been doing comedy, like I said, this month, towards the end of this month, or the middle of the month, it'll be 19 years. My parents only see me twice live, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, on my 10-year anniversary, I did a show at the Ice House. I think it was a show where he went when uh, uh, I did the 17 shots. Oh, okay. And then I did a DVD, uh, um, uh, Joey Medina, uh, Cholo Comedy Slam, I did a DVD, 
at the uh, Million Dollar Theater in downtown LA. Mm -hmm. You know, he packed it out. Joey really packed that out, and it was it was it was awesome. And they went, you know, and and uh, um, so my mom to this day, because I used to work at FedEx before I became a comic. I worked there for almost ten years, and to this day, my mom knows. She knows I've been on TV. I've been on DVDs. I travel. All I do is comedy. And and every now and then, she's like, "Mijo, do you think you can get your job back at FedEx?" Okay. And I was like, I was, I was like, I like, no, mom. I go, the worst is over. You know, the, the struggling. You know, the 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 being hungry and broke all the time. It's over. You know. I mean, every now and then we have those months where we don't have that, you know, that many shows. But I go, Mom, the worst is over. I get paid now, you know. What oh, is she saying? You know, because she's just always thinking of my, my well-being. Yeah, so. my mom too. Yeah. My mom too. I think it's just. Are over you a here. single child? Only child? No, I have a sister. Really? How old? Twenty-two. Oh, young one. Young, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, well, like a so like, oh, younger. What? Is, no, 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 no. What does she think about your comedy? Um, she, my sister doesn't really have opinions about. She live over there or over here? She lives over there. Oh, okay. She's cool. Like, she's, like, you know, living her life. Um, you know, I left Peru when she was five years old, so... Wow. It's like, we don't really know each other deeply. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, I see her when I go back. We spend time. Like, we went to Europe last year together. But it's still, like, it's like, we don't see each other that much. You know, mm, so okay. they... I don't really know what their opinion is. You know, when I go to Peru, I, like sometimes I go for like two weeks and I put a show together because I, I just, two weeks without doing a stand-up is like a, too much for me. So I, I she bring all her friends to speak English and I do a show for that, so I, I keep mm. working. So I do like, that That we do together. And oh, okay. they like it, she likes it. Cause you know, I got, I got um, my siblings and my parents, when I started doing comedy, Nobody was uh, on board except my brother was kind of like, hey, you do what you want to do. Only because I think he had that because he was always just doing whatever he wanted, you know, like he didn't care that he would quit a good job to, to, to move to San Diego just because on the whim, just because he felt like living over there. So when I told him I'm going to quit everything and do comedy, oh, my dad got mad at me because I owned my own business and I worked at FedEx. I was making good money and, and, and I couldn't believe he said this. He was like, how are you going to support your parents? I'm like, I'm not supposed to support you. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to support myself, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes. so he was mad. He didn't talk to me for a while. And then my sisters were all like, you know, oh, you know, that's dumb. You know, what about, you know, your money, whatever. You know, cause, you know I had it going on as a young uh, guy. And the girlfriend I had, I had a girlfriend when I first started doing comedy. And, uh, uh, oh, she hated it. She hated it. Cause, of course. Yeah, because, you know, she's like. I, I would hate it. was like careful. Yeah, because I went, I went, you know, from. From, from, from having a job. Uh, well, not only that, but I used to live in a three bedroom house by myself. Oh. I wow. had my cars and stuff like that. And I had to move out. To renting a room with this family that I knew, you I know. know and so she was in an, a mood from. I lived in Hawthorne, which is by LAX, and she lived in uh, Inglewood. So we're five minutes, seven minutes from each other. So I moved to Omani. So she used to get mad because like, oh, you live far now, blah blah blah. And and uh, um, you know, I didn't really have money to take her out anymore, and this and that. So, uh, you know, within within a year we were done. We were done. She she moved down to somebody with more money. You yes, know. I mean. <laughs> yeah, basically, that's, that's understandable. That, that happens, fellas. That happens, fellas. You know, make sure your girl likes you for you, not for what you can give her. All right. That's why I like my girl now, because every now and then, you know, she's like, I'm hungry. I'm like, I'm broke. She's like, I'll make toast, and I'm good with that. You know. Oh, that's good. So yeah, so she's your, she's supportive. She's supportive. You know. Your yeah, yeah. We, we got a kid together, so you know. That's why now I'm trying to bust my ass, working harder, doing all kinds of stuff. You know. Yeah, for the so. wedding, especially. Yeah, yeah. Money, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, gotta gotta try. Pay gotta for that try. cake. Right now in your five-year career, what's one of the best shows you've had? The best shows I had. Uh, um, Benny Mena show. Um, Benny Mena at the uh, Laugh Factory. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, what was one of your best uh, shows you've had? Where you just get off stage and you're like, yeah, I'm ready. You know, I think even on the road, like. I had really great shows in San Jose Improv. Oh, San Jose is fun. That's a beautiful improv too. Yes. It's one or of my favorites. Like in Tempe Improv. Okay. You know those big rooms with 500 people. Yeah, yeah, those, those are, are nice. The best ones. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be the size. Sometimes it can be a small room. Yeah, but when everybody's laughing, it fills you up. So it's mm, like okay. the, the feeling, right? You so when you do the small rooms, nobody really laughs? Yeah, yeah, nobody laughs. <laughs> it's so sad. Is that what it is? It is yes, it's so sad. Okay, so, so right now in LA, what's your favorite club? Uh, the Ice House. The Ice House? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I like the store too, but the ice house. I like the ice house better. All right. And what's your favorite like non club venue? You know, because we have a lot of venues. You know. A uh, non club venue in LA. Yeah. I like I like Fiesta Hall. Oh yeah, that's fun. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're gonna talk about Ruben, uh, the Fiesta Hall, knee slappers comedy. All right, yeah, we yeah, don't need do to that. mention the other one. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, um, so, <laughs> so anyways, um, uh, let people know where they can catch you at. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to be at the Ice House APM Stage 2 with Ricky Sketa. All right, cool. And you're hosting that show? I'm hosting the show, yes. Oh, nice. Right, no, cool. no, no. Sorry, sorry. I'm doing a set. All right. And where can they find you on social media? Uh, my webpage, losepasos.com. My Facebook, Los Pasos, or Instagram, Los Pasos Funny. Do you have a Twitter or a Snapchat? I don't really use Twitter or Snapchat. Snapchat. No. You know what? I have a Snapchat. I need to be more into it because it's for younger people. It's for younger people. Yeah, but that's why I need to, I got to be young at heart. Uh, you, you like, like, like George right there, he's got a Snapchat, but that's because he's a pedophile. All right. So yeah. Oh, he's, well, he's yeah. trying to hook up with young George, come on. <laughs> nice play. Uh, but all right. Um, and people can catch you, uh, catch this uh, show on uh, B Vision and the, uh, the the BT uh, uh, the BTV we can get catch us on ldufonigo.com and on Facebook you can catch it on my Facebook Benny Mena that's Benny with one N B E N Y M E N A all right Luz thank you for coming thank out you here guys. doing the show me. hope you had Thanks a good time team. and you know it's been a long time since I saw you I saw yeah, you like, like a week ago a week ago <laughs> yeah so because lately show. you've been doing a lot of my shows yes and, your and birthday I show tell you time. well not not just my birthday show but I had you at uh, at Sage. I had you uh, at at at, um, at, at Babouche, the Laugh Factory, and she's been killing it, y'all. She's a very funny lady. Make sure you go check her out, support her. Uh, support. If you don't understand what she's saying, bring somebody who speaks Spanish. Yes. And then they can That's translate the jokes, all right? <laughs> and buy uh, my merchandise. And then because now you said you're going to school, you do script writing, whatever. Uh, take some English classes, all right? And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually. I do. And. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll see y'all later. Right? You can catch me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Benny Mena. All right, y'all have a good night. Be safe. Have a great weekend. <laughs>